Hello and welcome to today's Ninja Trader Ecosystem webinar event with Dean Rogers of Case & Company. My name is Tiffany and I am a platform representative at Ninja Trader. I'd like to mention that it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity future contracts and forex. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and it will depend on your specific circumstances and financial resources. It is possible to lose all funds deposited with your broker and can even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at the link provided for more information or for a copy of the CFTC full risk disclosure. Also, also please remember that these training webinars are not solicitation nor recommendation, but simply educational in nature. This webinar is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage related question, questions should be directed to NinjaTrader brokerage directly at the information provided. The NinjaTrader ecosystem website is home to hundreds of third party apps and services all centered around the NinjaTrader platform. With new tools added nearly every day, NinjaTrader ecosystem is home to hundreds of apps and services. You can quickly and easily find the tools or services you're looking for with a simple keyword search. You'll also find information about upcoming webinars and an on-demand video archive to view, re I apologize, to view event recordings at the link provided. For up-to-date information, be sure to like or follow NinjaTrader on all social media platforms. I've included both. NinjaTrader is always free for advanced charting, advanced charting strategy backtesting, and trade simulation. To ensure you are in the latest version of NinjaTrader and pick up a free live data trial, please visit the following link. You can purchase or lease NinjaTrader at the following link. If you're just getting started with NinjaTrader, we offer free live training on a daily basis. You can view a schedule of weekly webinars at the following link. We are very excited for this unique event in which Dean will demonstrate his approach to using Fibonacci tools to identify optimal short trade opportunities in bear markets. Thanks again for your attendance today. And with further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to the Ninjaitor webinar room, Dean. Please take it away, Dean. Hey, thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate that. Uh, let me get my screen shared out here. All right, everybody should be able to see my screen now. If you can see my screen and you can hear me okay, if you can type a Y into the chat, just to make sure everything sounds good. All right, perfect, thank you all. Well, thank you all for joining me this afternoon during these uh, crazy times that we live in. I know uh, things are a little strange right now. Markets are uh, a bit crazy. Um, I know some of us feel a little uh, out of sorts, uh, maybe different situations working from home. I know that a lot of you joining us today are retail traders, so you're, you're used to working from home or, uh, you know, uh, uh, I tease everybody because, you know, not a lot has changed for me. I, I do work from home myself. So, uh, but this is a good good uh, opportunity for us all to come together, talk a little bit about some bear market strategies um, and, and trading with some of the case indicators. And, and really, even if you're not using the case indicators, these are strategies uh, that, you know, more than likely are going to help you improve uh, or at least give you some new edge to the, the, the trading techniques and strategies that you use. Um, for those of you not familiar, my name is Dean Rogers. I'm a uh, chartered market technician. Uh, I've been working with Case & Company as their senior consulting analyst for, um, wow, almost 20 years now. It'll be 20 years in, in May, I believe. So um, I have a longstanding relationship with Cynthia Case. Uh, I think many of you know her. She's a, a very well-known market technician. Um, and, you know, we've been working with NinjaTrader for a very long time, uh, basically since the beginning. And so we offer several different services and, and packages on uh, NinjaTrader that we'll talk about today and we'll utilize today. Um, my goal today is to really talk about bear market trading strategies. And, you know, we will definitely be using a lot of the case tools and I will introduce those to you. But the core of this is going to be you know focused on the strategy not so much how our indicators work there are lots and lots of videos that i have posted on our website and webinars that we've done with ninja trader that are posted on the ninja trader youtube channel that cover how the case indicators work uh, a lot of the methodology and and uh algorithm uh, you know algorithmic design behind them so there's definitely lots of resources to learn more about that um, you can also if you're interested take a trial of the, of the indicators and we'll teach you more. So with that, let's go ahead and get things started here. Uh, 
So case of standard disclaimer here, we all know that trading is risky, uh, that we you know, need to uh, use stops, uh, make sure that we're uh, not trading more than we can risk. Um, you know, very straightforward stuff here that we should all be used to by now. Uh, in the webinar today, the first thing that we're going to talk about is determining trend direction. Now, to be perfectly honest, the, the strategy that I'm going to talk about will heavily utilize Fibonacci uh, tools. And so it's a strategy that not only works in bear markets, but also in bull markets. Um, basically, we want, we want a trending market. And so once we have established and decided what the trend direction is, we can use these tools to decide optimal trade setup points and then use indicators such as case stat or case X to pinpoint or time the entries and exits. Um, so we will identify support and resistance using Fibonacci projections and retracements. This is something that we do a lot of. Um, again, for those of you not familiar with cases work above and beyond what we do on the retail side with Statware and trade state, or uh, um, excuse me, Ninja Traders uh, case X uh, and the different bar types that we have. We also uh, forecast the crude oil and natural gas markets. We also now forecast the metals markets, base and precious metals. And in doing so, a lot of what we use is Fibonacci support and resistance levels. Once we've established where support and resistance are, then we will look at when we have a trade setup, what the entry rules are. We'll look at where we want to place stops, how to exit the trades in a couple of different ways. And then we'll go through a couple of different trade examples. At any point, if you have questions, feel free to uh, type them into the chat. I will do my best to try to keep an eye on chat. Um, but if I don't get to your question, you know, I will try at the end of the presentation, I'm going to try to leave around 15 minutes to answer any questions that anybody has that I missed during the presentation. So let's go ahead and take a, a moment and look at some of the charts uh, or the uh, chart types and indicators that we have on IntraTrader 7 and IntraTrader 8. Um, these include case X range bars, case swing, case stat wear, and case X. So case X range bars are a uh, special bar type. They're basically a range type bar, but, and they use a high low range rather than true range. Um, and the target range is based upon an un underlying time bar. For instance, in this uh, lower right corner here, and let me get my annotation tool here so we can spotlight what I'm looking at. All right, so with the X range bars, it's a bar type that's only available on NinjaTrader. And what it does is we will set a minute value, for instance, a 10 minute bar in this case. The algorithm will look at what the high low range or the average high low range of a 10 minute bar is over a certain period of time, and then use that as the target range for that day. So on that day, let's say that the, the high, average high low range over the last 10 days has been 15 cents. It will then use 15 cents as the high low range for that day. The next day, it will we'll reassess things, um, and the, the average high-low range might be $0.16. Cents. So now for that day, we'll use $0.16, cents and so on. So basically, the idea is it's an adaptable uh, high-low range bar um, that adjusts with volatility and then also is based upon an underlying uh, bar length or underlying time frame. So if you're used to trading a five-minute bar, the X-range bars make it quick and easy to determine what is the equivalent range bar of a typical five minute bar. Um, we are big believers in range bars, all types of range bars, whether they're X range, I'm actually gonna show another bar type um, of my own design called DR range bars that are very similar to this. Um, and uh, all of this is, is uh, available on NinjaTrader. We're also going to use an indicator called case swing, and this is one of my go-to indicators. It's part of the case statware package uh, of trading indicators available on, on NinjaTrader. Generally, whenever I bring up a chart, the first thing I do is just look at a chart with nothing on it. I want to look for candlestick patterns. I want to look for geometric formations like double tops, double bottoms, flags, pennants, coils, whatever it might be. Anything that's going to give me a clue as to the direction of the market. Are we going to see it higher? Are we going to see it lower? Are we in a period of consolidation? Whatever it may be. 
Now, those patterns aren't always there, um, but if they are, they give me a little bit of a clue. The next thing that I do is I add case swing onto the chart. I love Fibonacci. I love Fibonacci analysis, wave projections, and retracements. And so the case swing indicator I can use to quickly and easily identify the swing highs and swing lows. Uh, it gives me an idea whether or not we're overcoming prior swing highs and swing lows, which is important to me in identifying trend direction. Um, just overall gives me a sense of the flow of the waves and the patterns on the chart. So case swing is a very simple tool, but it's a very valuable tool that, uh, you know, we've seen other things. There's other things on uh, like zigzag. And I think there's one called um, uh, Fibonacci swings that's available on NinjaTrader that is very similar to this. Uh, we do it a little bit differently, but the, the bottom line is, is this is a tool that helps us to quickly and easily identify swing points, highs and lows, and, and the waves and the uh, points at which we're going to take the retracements from. Case Statware is our core set of indicators, again, available on NinjaTrader. And um, this is something that, you know, Miss Case had developed when she was actually, you know, when she was a, a full-time trader uh, for, for Chevron and, and everyone else back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, it's, and, and we've refined it over the years. And really what it comes down to is it's a, it's a, a set of momentum-based indicators uh, that look at several different momentic, momentum indicators, uh, different bar lengths, and gives us permissions on whether or not we're looking at a long permission or short permission for each bar. That's the color coding. So anything that's pink or red is permission short per bar. Uh, anything that's blue or dark blue is, is uh, permission long. And then we also have two different momentum indicators, the KCD, uh, which is this momentum indicator here and the case PO at the very bottom, uh, both of which are adaptable. They're basically, uh, you know, similar to something like a stochastic or RSI or even an MACD, but rather than looking at a fixed look back length, they, used a, they use a dynamic adjustable look back length for both the up moves and the down moves. So they're very, they're a dynamic look at uh, momentum over time. And so you know, the algorithm is pretty complex. I'm not going to get into that obviously here, but the idea is the case momentum indicators improve upon some of the shortfalls of traditional momentum like stochastic RSI and MACD, which are using fixed look back lengths. And with those, we can identify different signals, for instance, momentum divergence. So we have bullish divergence here as we make new lows. We see momentum is not making new lows, um, and therefore we get a bullish divergence. We have overbought and oversold signals, and so on. So these are great tools for looking for exit points in the market. The last tool that we're going to use is something called CaseX. Uh, so CaseX is basically a derivative, really, of Case Statware. All of the CaseX signals are derived from Statware. The difference is, is we don't see the underlying indicators. We don't see the momentum on the chart. We don't see all of the color coding on the chart. Rather, we're just seeing the signals. We're seeing the entry and exit points, or potential entry and exit points, I should say. Uh, neither case stat or case are black box systems. They're sophisticated indicators, so that's something to keep in mind. But with CaseX, the reason we developed CaseX was we really wanted to try to simplify the chart for some traders. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you, you have lots of you know, different indicators on your charts. You're looking at lots of different things. And so we wanted to simplify that so that you're just seeing the underlying signals. And that's exactly what this is. We've got the color-coded diamonds and triangles, which are entry points, and then the arrows, which are potential exits. And then we also have these dots over here, which are our stops. All right. So again, there are lots and lots of webinars and videos on the NinjaTrader YouTube page and on the Case web page and our Case YouTube page that explain all the nuances of Statware and CaseX and X-Range bars and Case Swing and everything that we're going to be using today. All right, so let's talk about determining trend direction. Um, the first way that we're going to do that is visually with Case Swing, higher highs, higher lows, so on and so forth. And then we also have a special indicator called Case Trend. So the easiest and simplest way 
to identify trend. And trend is relative. Trend, in my opinion, is relative to the bar length that we're looking at. But generally speaking, I start off by looking at a daily chart and I want to, I want to determine uh, the bigger picture trend. You know, even if I'm day trading, I want, to, I want to look at the bigger picture trend and make sure that I'm trading in the direction of trend. Um, if the market's falling and the trend is down, it's a lot easier for me to justify taking the risk reward or risk reward is generally going to be more favorable for short trades than it is long trades. Um, that's not to say that I can't take long trades in a downtrend, but I've got to maybe take smaller position sizes, carry tighter stops, and so on and so forth. But today what we want to do is we want to identify are we in a downtrend or not. And so we can see here this is WTI. We all have heard about WTI. This is one of my favorite markets that we do a lot of analysis on. And so, you know, basically since January, the market has, for the most part, been making lower low or lower highs and lower lows. Um, yes, we had a little period of time here in February uh, where we did overcome one of the prior swing highs on the daily chart, but nothing major. So maybe there was a bit of question here, but this was a fairly shallow and choppy move up, most likely corrective, and we see the break lower out of that. And then again, continuing to make lower lows and lower swing highs. So that's telling us that we're in downtrend. Very simple way of doing it. A little bit more of a sophisticated way. Lots of people look at trend in lots of different ways. You know, DMI, ADX um, are, are one of my favorites. But we also have an indicator called case trend. And I actually did a webinar where we introduced this. I think it was two, maybe three years ago with NinjaTrader. Um, that should be, I know it's archived uh, on the YouTube page. Um, but case trend is, is actually a fairly simple indicator. But it's very powerful in what it can show us. And so what case trend does is it uses actually standard deviations of double true range. Now what double true range is, is rather than uh, just using two bars, the true range of two bars, it's the true range over three bars. And that's something that Cynthia developed with our dev stops, um, the stops that we use. We use standard deviations of the double true range because it's a little bit smoother than just regular true range. So nonetheless, it's very similar to true range. But what we're looking at here is three standard deviations either above or below the highs or the lows, or excuse me, yeah, the highs or the lows um, in, a, in a trailing stop manner. So for instance, whenever the bar or the line here is orange, the trend is down. And what's happening is we are adding three standard deviations or three standard, or yeah, three standard deviations of the double true range of over the last 30 bars, okay? And we're adding that to the lows and we treat it like a trailing stop. So as we're making new lows, the case trend indicator will fall. So this works very much. It's basically our stops, our, our case dev stops. The difference here is, is it does not flip until we see a close beyond um, or in some cases a, a touch of the, um, of the line. So once we see a close beyond or a touch of the line, we'll see that flip. So here it was permission long, here it was permission short. So basically the case trend indicator showing us here on the WTI daily chart that it's been in a downtrend since um, early January. So that's just a very simple way um, to determine trend. So once we've determined trend direction, we want to start looking at where are support and resistance levels. We want to look for trade setups. Now there's lots and lots of different ways to use the statware indicators, the CaseX indicators, to use any type of indicator, right? But what I want to look for here and what I want to focus on today is where do we look for a trade setup based upon support and resistance and then use the case statware or CaseX indicators to, to uh, time the entry. So to do this, we're going to use Fibonacci wave projections, retracements, and most importantly, confluence points between the two. So we'll talk about that here for a moment. Um, just as an overview for those of you that aren't familiar with Fibonacci, I'm not going to give a lesson on Fibonacci. There are lots and lots and lots of videos uh, on the internet, even uh, that NinjaTrader's ecosystem has done on the Fibonacci analysis, Fibonacci tools, uh, Fibonacci projections, Fibonacci retracements, how Fibonacci uh, is derived, all of this kind of stuff. The basic idea is that Fibonacci uh, is a series of, it's a, it's a number series 
where we add sequential numbers to one another. So one plus one would be two, two plus one would be three, three plus two would be five, five plus three would be eight, and so on. These are numbers that naturally occur um, all over the place, in nature, in chaotic data series, um, and in the market, most importantly to us, in the market. And so a lot of you have probably heard of Elliott Wave. Well, Elliott Wave is based upon five wave trends with three wave corrections, both of which are Fibonacci numbers. Um, we also see Fibonacci come out in the different types of patterns that we see in the market. Now we can derive from the Fibonacci series or the Fibonacci series of numbers, we can derive different numbers or ratios, for instance, like phi or the golden, uh, the golden mean or the golden ratio. And this is again, a number that shows up all the time in nature and chaotic day series. I mean, I always like to try to tell people, you know, we like, even with the Fibonacci series, as an example, you know, look at the human body. I mean, basically, you know, we have two eyes, two nostrils, one nose, two hands, five fingers, you know, so on and so forth, right? These things show up all over the place. Um, even the ratio of our upper torso to our lower torso is based upon the Fibonacci ratio uh, or, or the golden mean, 1.618. So if I take any sequential number, if, if for instance, if I divide 144 by 89, that's going to give me around 1.618. And so this is a number that's going to converge upon 1.618, which is a very important number in mathematics, and especially in Fibonacci uh, um, analysis that we're going to be doing. That's what they call the golden mean or phi. I can also take, for instance, 89 divided by 144, and that's going to give me 0.618, which is phi prime. That's another very, very important number that we're going to talk about. If I go two numbers back, if I do 55 divided by 144, that's going to converge at 0.382, uh, which is basically double prime. And then even like, for instance, 34 divided by 144 would be give me 0.236. So these are all numbers that are derived from the Fibonacci data series. And with that information, we can then use different projections and retracements. And, it, you know, again, I'm not here to teach how to do projections, how to use retracements, or even how to use the tools in NinjaTrader. There's plenty of webinars to show that. But these are the, the, the wave projections and the retracements that we use. Uh, we call the 0.618 projection the smaller than. Equal to is 1.00. Intermediate is 1.382. And larger than is 1.618. And then we have something called the extended wave C, which is 2.764. That's basically 1.382 times 2. You can also derive 2.764 from the Fibonacci data series. Um, the most important of these, in my opinion, are the smaller than, equal to, and larger than, 0.618, 1, and 1.618. As far as retracements are concerned, case, we use 0.21, which is a Fibonacci number, but it's not derived from Fibonacci like the 0.236 is. So most Analysts and charting packages, even NinjaTrader, use 0.236 as the initial uh, retracement level. And that's the one that I'll be using today because I'm using the tools in NinjaTrader. 0 0.382, 0 0.5, 0 0.618. We use 0.78, but 0.764 is the number that's derived from the Fibonacci series. And then 0 0.89. 89 is another Fibonacci number that we like. Of these, in my opinion, the most important are 0.382 and 0.618, especially for commodities. Um, a lot of equity traders really focus on uh, 0.5, and, and that seems to be the case with uh, you know, even, even uh, the equity indices. 0.5 seems to be pretty important as well. So those are the numbers that we're going to focus on um, in, in, in today's webinar. Now, the key idea behind Fibonacci is, in our opinion, looking for confluence points or looking for clusters of um, Fibonacci projections and retracements that all overlap one another in, you know, within a certain tolerance. So this is the gold, the April gold chart. So when I made this chart, April was the most active contract. Now it's June. But at the time, the market had just made a high around 1704, and that was an area that we had been calling for for weeks leading up to this in our analysis, in our, in our weekly commentaries and our forecasts, because it was a high confluence point for many of these major waves. So for instance, looking at the move up from 1458.5 to 1619.60, down to 
1542.8, the equal to target of the 1.00 projection was 1703.90. Now, looking at the sub wave up from 1542.80 up to 1598.5, 1551, the XC projection was also right around, it was 1705. So again, right around the 1704 area. And then later on, you know, you can also look at basically this wave up 1458 and a half all the way to 1691.70 down to 1564. The 61.8 projection of that was 1108. And then 1542 up to 1691 down to 1564. The equal to or 1.00 was right around 1713. So we kind of had this confluence area here between 1704 and 1713. And 1704 for some of these sub waves up from 1564 was also important, but I, you know, didn't go into an intraday chart to show those. The idea was that that was acting very much like a magnet for the market, and it was the market was drawn up to those levels. And so when it moved up to that area, we knew that there was a very good chance that we were going to see a fairly significant turn back down. Now, we didn't necessarily think it was going to fall to 1450 at the time, but we were going to probably see some sort of good retracement. And so that would have been an area where we would have been looking possibly to short the market. Um, nonetheless, the idea behind all of this is to look for confluence. That is one of the key things that Ms. Case has taught me over the years using Fibonacci uh, is we can look at all of these wave projections and by themselves, they're not always very meaningful. I mean, they can tell us a little bit of something. But when we start to look at multiple, the projections of multiple waves and the retracements of multiple waves and the confluence points between them, where they overlap one another, that begins to draw a picture as to where the market's going to find support and where the market's going to find resistance and where potential turning points could be. All right. So now we'll take a look at some entry rules. Once we've defined, we've got, we've defined our trend using either case swing or case trend or whatever other methodology you want to use, moving average crossovers, uh, you know, DMI and ADX, whatever it might be. We've established trend. The next step is to basically establish our entry rules or, or, or the support and resistance and then our entry rules. So as we look at this, one of the things that we can do is we can look at the retracements. So retracements, in this case, I'm going from 2499 down to 2361. I've got the 23.6, 38.2, and 50% retracement, 62% retracement. So the market rose to 2442 and a half, and it held the 62% retracement and started coming down. Now I write here, enter at the Fibonacci level. But one has to ask themselves, how do we know which Fibonacci level to enter at? Do we enter at the 23.6, the 38.2? And I think this is where people get frustrated with Fibonacci is because there's nothing clearly defined to say, oh, you always enter at the 62% or whatever it might be. This is just showing us where resistance is. So what I want to do is I want to take and I want to add case X or case statware. And I want to look for a confirmed entry signal after we've held one of these resistance levels. So for instance, in this case, as the market, you know, we've established, let's say that it's a downtrend. We see this move down, we get a nice retracement back to the upside. It holds the 62% retracement. As it starts to come down again, we get our short signal, which is this pink triangle. That's telling us, case X is telling us to get short. We've met resistance, a very key level, as you recall, 38 and 62 are what I believe are the most important retracements. And then the market starts to come down. So at this point, this is where I would look in this situation, in this strategy to enter the market. Okay. So very simple, very easy way to look at where to enter the market. Now we're gonna get a little bit more complex with that when we look at some examples, but I just wanted to introduce that idea. As far as stops are concerned, the easiest way to place a stop is at the prior swing high. Because if we overcome, so we got in short here, this is that same example, we have the, we held the 62% retracement, we come down, we have the uh, entry signal from KSEX, the pink uh, triangle, 
And then we place the stop at the prior swing high, which was the 2242 and a half, because we know if it overcomes that, more than likely we're going to get an extended move up. We might form some sort of double top, so maybe we put our, our stop a point or two above that level, but nonetheless, if it overcomes that swing high, it's probably going to continue to move up and we would want to exit. However, we also can use the retracements. So as the move down takes place, we can look at where is the 62% or if we want to take a little rest, less risk, maybe the 38% retracement of the move down. So as we're making new lows, we continue to follow where the 62% retracement is. And that's where our stop level will be. But once we stop making lows, it's almost like a trailing stop. As it starts to move up, we're going to keep our, our swing low drawn here. So in this case, it held the 62% retracement and it continued to move down. Ultimately, we're going to hit that 62% retracement or we're going to get some sort of exit signal before that. Maybe hit a profit target or whatever it might be. Again, not my favorite method. My favorite method is going to be to use standard deviations of, well, in this case, I'm saying ATR. It's really DTR. I talked about that earlier, the double true range, okay? Um, but very similar to average true range. And I like to use, we like to use standard deviations because there's statistical significance to standard deviations of average true range rather than multiples of average true range. Meaning uh, Wells Wilder talked about using, you know, uh, three times the average true range which is fine. It was a, an improvement upon using fixed stops. But Cynthia introduced the concept of using standard deviations because there's statistical significance. We know that a three standard deviation move is in the 99th percentile. The idea being if we've taken that three standard deviations over the last 30 bars and we hit that three standard deviation level, there's less than a 1% chance that the market's going to continue in our favor during the next 30 bars. So we know that we should be getting out. We got to, you know, there's, there's a very small probability that the market's going to continue to move in our favor. So whenever we entered into this trade, these are the dev stops from K-Statware that I have drawn on the screen here. And we would use a trailing stop using standard deviations of DTR or in this case, or of ATR or in this case of, of DTR. Okay, so stops are very important. I think that we should all trade with stops um, and, and, and manage risk. I think stops are a very important way to manage risk. Uh, and again, last year I did a, a webinar with Ninja Trader where I talked about the different bar lengths and different stop sizes, all based upon your risk appetite. It's, a, in my opinion, a very, very important webinar um, and a very important concept that a lot of people overlook. So I would definitely encourage you to go check it out as well. All right, so finally, we've gotten in, we've got our entry, we know where we got our, we, we're gonna place our stop, but where, where do we exit? And so, there's a couple of different ways that we can exit trades. Um, from a swing trading standpoint, meaning I wanna hold a trade through a trend or through a, a swing. Again, trend is relative to time frame or bar length but I want to hold my trade through this move down or through this move down or through this move up, whatever it might be. As the market's moving down, in that type of scenario, and this is kind of the default way that we teach case that we're in case X, it's a swing trading strategy. Uh, we're going to look for momentum signals, momentum divergence, overbought, oversold signals. That is going to tell us when to get out. From a day trading standpoint, um, or even a scalping type of standpoint. We can use momentum signals, but we don't always get momentum signals at turning points. And, and day trading and scalping, generally we have a lower risk appetite. Um, and, and therefore, we're gonna you know, be trading smaller bar lengths. We're not always going to get those momentum signals. And so a lot of times in this situation, I think that using either a Fibonacci level to tell us when to get out, or so like a Fibonacci projection. So in this case, if we hit, this is that same example that we've, we've been looking at. Market moved up, held the 62% retracement, came down, we get our entry signal from case X. 
we place our stop, we're trailing that stop, the market's moving down, the stop is holding, we're using this third standard deviation. These are one and 2.2 standard deviations. This is 3.6 standard deviations of the DTR. It holds as we move down the 61.8 projection of this wave, 2499 to 2361 to 2442 is right around 2357. I know more than likely when I hit the smaller than or any of these projections, smaller than, equal to, intermediate, larger than, so 0.618, 1.00, 1.382, 1.618. I know when I hit those, more than likely I'm going to see some sort of upward correction or correction off of that level before the market moves back down in this situation. So once I hit that area, very shortly thereafter, I get a bounce back up. We would have hit stops. We would have gotten stopped out. So when I hit that, I can have a profit target at that level telling me, get out. Um, the other thing that we can see here or that we can use, and I think this is more practical for a lot of traders, is to use a profit target. Now, whenever we set profit targets, we generally are going to want to want those to be dynamic in some way, in my opinion. We don't want to just say, well, I want to make a dollar because a dollar today on this chart might be, or you know, a, a point or, or 50 points or whatever it might be. 50 points today might be a lot different um, than it was two weeks ago, you know, as far as uh, volatility is concerned. So what I really want to look at is either standard deviations or in this example, I'm making it very simple here. I'm just using three times the 30 bar ATR. So I have the average true range indicator at the bottom of the screen. I set three times the 30 bar ATR from my entry point, and that's this red line. That's where I would have gotten out. Now that ended up coincidentally being very close to our 61.8 projection. And you guys are going to kind of find it funny. Maybe it's just coincidence, but a lot of the profit targets that I set in the examples that we're going to go through are very close to some of these Fibonacci levels. So um, that's, I think, one of the more practical ways to know when to get out or know when to take profit. Okay. So again, three ways to get out. Momentum signals, divergence, overbought, oversold. I think those are decent, but more so, they're very good exit signals but they're very good exit signals for more of a swing trading strategy where we want to hold a trade through a trend. Um, whereas more of on a, on a day trading type of situation, we can use either Fibonacci projections or I think what is more practical would be some sort of profit target based upon either standard deviations or multiples of the ATR. And whenever I look at ATI, I usually use a 30 bar. I want 30 periods because 30 from a statistical standpoint is significant. All right. So let's go through a couple of trade examples. Again, if anybody has questions, I know we've kind of been blowing through things here, but if anybody has questions, please let me know. I'm going to try to wrap this up in the next six minutes. I wanted to have a little bit more time for questions, but as usual, I, I talk more than, uh, more than I think I will. All right. So. I'm going to start off here. I'm using a DR range bar. This is very similar to a normal range bar or even the case uh, X range bar. The difference here is that I'm building the range bars with one minute bars rather than one tick bars. And the reason I do that is one minute bars, one, I can get more history. Um, a lot of data vendors will only give you maybe up to 180 days or 60 days of tick data. Um, so whenever I'm back testing strategies, I really want more than that. I want five, 10 years worth of data. And so I can get minute bars to do that. Um, so I use minute bars to build the bars rather than tick bars. And then the second, uh, thing behind this with the DR range bars is that I use, um, um, it, it basically eliminates because we're using one minute bars, it eliminates a little bit of the volatility. Um, whenever we're using the tick bars. Generally, the tick bars can be a little bit more volatile, and uh, so it just gives us a little bit of a smoother chart. Nonetheless, DR range bars aren't publicly available right now, so I, I, but I wanted to explain what they were. Hopefully, that'll be something that we can put out there at some point. The X range bars, like I said, are very, very similar. Even the range bars that are built into NinjaTrader, which are very, very good, are similar to what we're gonna be using here. The idea, mainly, is that we wanna use a range bar. All right, so here I'm using a $1 range bar on crude oil. This is one of my favorite charts for 
larger time frame analysis. 3670 was the swing high that took place after uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia declared a little price war and prices gapped down. We had the bounce. 3670 was that swing high. This has been a very important swing high uh, for the move down um, in WTI over the last several weeks. I have case trend indicator on here and on the one minute chart. So during the move down, orange was showing us that it was a downtrend, green was showing us that it was an uptrend relative to the one, $1 case or DR range bar. But right in here, we can see that we met some very important resistance right around this 2850-ish area. We almost have a double top, like a little pseudo double top. It wasn't quite perfect. But then we also had the 1.618 projection of that first wave up, and then the XC projection, the 2764 projection of this second little sub wave up, Plus, that was right around the 50% retracement of the move down from 3670. So right in that band, that's a little blue band, we had a confluence point where the market moved into that area and stalled. And as it started to come down, we get a flip of the case trend indicator to orange, telling us that it's moving into a short permissioned trend. So that's kind of this orange or goldish gold band here. So at that point, this is the one minute or one dollar DR range bar. I'm going to drop down into a 35 cent bar to start looking for trade setups. So I'm using multiple bar lengths here. Um, so this orange band is that same area of time on the one dollar bar where we saw the flip of case trend to short. So I'm not so much worried about how the trend, case trend looks on the DR or the 35 cent bar. I'm more concerned on the one minute bar or the $1 bar. Now what I'm looking at is as this move down continued, we make a pretty major swing low here or a reasonably major swing low at 24.22. And we get, we start to see, so I'm taking a retracement of that move down from 28.49 to 24.22. Our minimal retracement is the 23.6% retracement case. We use 21%, but I'm using the, the uh, tools built into NinjaTrader here, so I wanted to use 23.6. And we see this little move up. So the equal to target of the 1.00 projection of this first wave up was right there around that same area as the 25, 23.6% retracement. Plus, this move up, when I look at it, I didn't draw the trend lines. I should have kind of forms like almost, it's not perfect, but almost like a flag or pennant formation. One might even say it was like a uh, ascending wedge. Um, but that's a bearish pattern. It's telling me this is more than likely corrective and we're gonna break lower out of that. So we hit this band of resistance, the market starts to come down and I get my short signal, my pink triangle from case X. It's where I enter my trade. And so from there, now I want to trail a stop. I'm not showing the stops again. I try to keep these very simple so I didn't have too much stuff on the screen. But as we're moving down, we're trailing our stop, more than likely using the uh, dev stops or the, the, the uh, stops built into case X that are based upon the standard deviations of the double true range. And as it's moving down, I place a, a target at three times the average true range. So that was down here where this red line is, which was also pretty close to the 276.4 projection of that initial wave down from 2529. It was also near the point at where the market stalled. That's where I got out. And then we see the bounce. Okay, so that's the first trade. So then moving on from there, okay, so here was the 2336 swing low. This was the trade that we just took here, this little pink triangle. Now we start to get this move up, okay? And during this move up, did I skip a chart? Oh, yeah, I did skip a chart, sorry. Um, so here's our 2336. Here's the trade that we had just taken. This was a pretty major swing low, so we're looking at taking the retracement of that move up. I'm also looking at this wave projection up. Now, I'm not looking to take long trades right now. I'm still permission short on my $1 DR range bar. And so we hit the larger than target. 1.618 was 25.89. We hit that on the nose, 25.89. Okay, so there's our, our Fibonacci or fee. We hit that. 
That was also right around three cents away from the 50% retracement of the move down from 28.49. So that was a very important area. The market held it. We start to come down. We get our purple triangle here, which is a filtered short signal. It's actually a stronger short signal than this pink triangle. And so we enter short here. And again, we can either use some sort of Fibonacci projection, we can use some sort of exit signal, but you can see here, both of these didn't have an exit signal. At 2336, we didn't have a momentum exit signal, basically one of these arrows, like a divergence uh, or overbought over sold signals. So I'm using the uh, three times the true range, that's where this red line is, and that would have been my profit target. I could have also, and I should have drawn this in, the wave projection down, that looks like right around the equal to target of this move down from 2589. So moving on from there, so coming down from 2589, so then we get this move down to the 2239. We start to see a bounce back up. Now this was a major swing high, this 2589. So rather than taking my retracement all the way from 2849, I'm taking my retracement from 2589 down. And we move up into this area where between the 38 and the 50% retracement. So we could have also looked at a smaller bar length and probably drawn in some waves. This looks like maybe an equal to or maybe an intermediate, like the 1.382 up around the 2389, so some confluence. But when we move up into that band of resistance, right around the 38% retracement, we kind of top out for a few bars, market turns down, we actually had a momentum overbought signal here, and then we get our pink triangle telling us that we should get short. So we short the market here. We set our profit target based upon the uh, three times the average true range, and that's where we would have looked to have gotten out. Now, you know, we kind of got to pick our poison here. You know, I'm, I'm using the, uh, the three times the average true range for my profit target, uh, which is pretty popular. But, you know, this is an example where, like, the equal to target of this primary wave down, it would have been great for us to hold it until there. But hindsight's always 2020, right? I mean, that's, you know, it hit 2076 or 2080, 2083, right near the 2076. And I would have been able to capture most of that move. Looked like a hero. But, you know, I always tell people, picking a bottom, uh, you're more lucky than you are good when you do it. So, um, Nonetheless, used profit target here. This is where we would have gotten out. And then from that point, oh, that was the last example. So, you know, as the market started moving back up here from the 2080 area, I would have, again, as long as we were still permission short on that $1 case bar, I would have been looking for a retracement down from 2589 to 2080. You know, that might have been right around a 38% retracement, probably looked at this wave up, maybe a 1.618, get the confluence. If we start moving down and we get our entry signal, I'm going to enter again. All right. So a very straightforward, hopefully a very straightforward uh, strategy for trading bear markets. This is also, like I said early on, something that you can use for bull markets. Um, the, I, the, the main point is you've really got to be able to identify the direction of the trend and the way to do that, in my opinion, would be using something like the case trend indicator. Um, so I will go ahead and, okay, so we got an example or a question here. Can you show the exact math on how you calculated the three times ATR? No, I cannot. Um, unfortunately, uh, Greg, I, I that's something you and I can talk about. So as far as the ATR, AT, or the true range, so true range is basically uh, the maximum distance of trading between two bars. There's a formula you can look it up. Um, it's basically the difference between the high and the prior close, the low and the prior close, uh, or the high and low, okay? The maximum of those three. And so with that, you can then look at standard deviations over a number of bars. So you take an average of that over 30 bars and then you take standard deviations. Most trading packages, including NinjaTrader, have true range or an average true range indicator built in. It's one of the most popular indicators out there. True range is used all throughout technical analysis. It is a great, great concept. Lots of different uses. So really all I'm doing 
in this, and what I'm doing is I'm basically looking at the ATR, which right around the time that I got into this trade was maybe around 47 cents. And I'm just taking three times that and I'm subtracting it from my entry point, which I was assuming in this example, my entry point was the open of the bar after this pink triangle formed. So the open here, I'm taking basically the, uh, you know, around $1.20, $1.30, you know, and, and down from there. And that's where I'm setting the target. Okay. Um, Sanu, uh, hopefully I'm saying that name right. Thank you for, uh, he said, great presentation. Thank you. Is there any past performance data that you could show? I don't have any back tests. I have not built this into a strategy. This is something, a, a strategy that I talk to a lot with our institutional traders. Um, so they're constantly looking at these Fibonacci levels. I'm helping them identify support and resistance, and then they're using indicators such as case that or case X to time their entries. Um, I haven't built it into any kind of backtesting, you know, strategy at this point. I'm hoping to do that at some point, but right now I don't have any backtest or uh, performance data for that. Um, all right, Ari is asking, uh, well, before I answer the next questions here, just very quickly, um, I want to show here, okay, my contact information is on the screen. Um, if you are interested in any of the services that we offer, Case Statware, Case X, um, our X range bars for Ninja Trader, uh, if you're interested in our crude oil, natural gas, or metals commentary, which covers both base and precious metals, uh, please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can also go to this website here. I know it just says NT Webinar 2019. I didn't have time to update it to 2020, but basically, if you go to this website here, you can take a 30 day trial of the case uh, indicators, um, case X or case Statware or the range bars. It's a complimentary 30 day trial. You'll also be able to get a download of the, uh, of the presentation. You can sign up for case Statware or case X. Um, the cost for case Statware or case X is 195 a month. Those include X range bars. Uh, and then we also have our webinar special uh, we're going to give a discounted rate of $18.95. So normally we do an annual or a yearly rate of $19.95, um, but we're going to do a 13-month discounted rate of $18.95 for 30 days. Okay, so basically up until May 16th, um, we will offer the $18.95 special. Uh, my contact information is here. Feel free to contact me, but uh, I will also put you in contact with uh, one of our um, analysts and, and uh, uh, support tech uh, uh, specialist, Daniel Case. So most of you will be frontlining with him. I will answer questions as I can, um, but I will also point you guys to him. Uh, a lot of the information that we talked about today as far as videos, uh, articles, lots and lots of educational information is available on our website. So feel free to go there as well. And please, if you haven't, follow us on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, or I'm on stock twits too. I put out um, on Tuesdays, I do an update for oil. On Wednesdays, I do natural gas. And on Thursdays, I do metals. And I usually post it to all three of those sites. So just a quick analysis based upon a lot of the Fibonacci stuff that we talked about today. All right, so let's get to some of these other questions here. Uh, Ari's asking, uh, my question is, uh, many of the vendors who do webinars through niche traders say their indicators work on Forex. However, I try it does not. Can you truly say this will help with Forex trading. I like your product, I'm a fit believer, uh, but Forex is highly manipulated, so I just want an honest answer, no more, no less. Honestly, I mean, I don't look at Forex that often. Um, I have done a lot of, of um, information on Forex in the past, you know, as far as like uh, examples and presentations and that kind of stuff. I know that the indicators work on Forex. Our indicators will work on anything. Really, the answer that you're looking for is, you know, do we have back testable results that have worked on Forex? No, we don't, because our indicators are not a black box. So I can't tell you that they're going to work on Forex or not. What I can tell you is that I am a true believer in Fibonacci analysis. Any market that I've ever looked at using Fibonacci, as long as the market is liquid, which Forex is plenty liquid, Fibonacci works well. The case indicators work well in those types of market too because they're based upon momentum. Yes, the markets are highly manipulated, but generally speaking, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, we can, that's, that's a discussion that people can have about whether, how things are manipulated. I mean, people say the same thing about the crude oil markets, but 
Fibonacci works really well. And I mean, last Thursday, my phone, like just as an example, on WTI, you know, and, and, and Brent, my phone was ringing off the hook last Thursday as OPEC and Russia and everybody else were meeting to discuss their 10 million plus barrel cut and the markets were falling. And I'm, the phone's ringing off the hook because people don't understand why is the market falling and they're going to cut by this historic amount. Well, the market obviously wasn't very impressed. The charts and the Fibonacci numbers were showing us the market was going to continue to move down. And it did. So, uh, you know, I don't have a great answer for you, Ari. Um, my honest answer is, you know, you can trial it. We can work with you on it um, and, and see if it works for you. Sometimes it just comes down to whether or not it fits your trading style and your risk appetite. Um, I think this is a great trading strategy for day trading. So this is really a day trading strategy, um, in my opinion. The newsletters are uh, available to individual investors. Yes, and we give a discounted rate on that. It's usually 375 a month, uh, rather than the full price of 750 per month per commodity. So uh, individual or retail traders can take a trial of our crude oil, natural gas, or metals commentaries. Um, How do we find the best time to buy or sell? Well, in my opinion, I mean, we, like we showed in this webinar, we identify trend. If we're in a downtrend, we then look for resistance levels based upon confluence of Fibonacci. At that point, once the market hits there and it holds, we have our trade set up. And then our trade confirmation is the uh, signal that we get from something like KSTAT or KSX telling us that we should enter the trade. So that's in my opinion, using this strategy, the best way, uh, you, again, using this strategy to buy or sell. I mean, that's, you know, there's, we could go on for years about when is the best time to buy or sell. Um, okay, uh, very briefly, uh, Robert Anger is asking, and this is a great question, what are the advantages of using fixed range bars versus regular time-based bars? Um, I can go on about this for days. I've done webinars on this, so you can definitely find them on the Case website, the YouTube Case YouTube channel, and even on the Ninja Trader YouTube channel. But very briefly, uh, range bars basically take the time element out of the chart. So what it does is, uh, and it smooths the distribution of volatility across the chart. So for instance, if I'm using a range bar, and just to use a very simple example, let's say it's a $1 range bar, and I'm using crude oil, every time the market moves by approximately a dollar, a, a, a bar will form. Now, if I'm looking overnight, when the market's not very active, if I'm looking at a five minute chart, I might get 60 bars, you know, on a five minute chart, and all of which are trading in a very small, tight, you know, 10 cent range because the market's just not moving. Well, if I'm using that $1 range bar, all 60 of those five minute bars are gonna get basically squished up into one bar. So when I apply my charts to the indicator, or uh, my indicators to the chart, if I'm applying my indicator to the five minute chart, I basically am weighting that period of time very heavily at those prices because I've got 60 bars that are all within that 10 cent range. However, the case bar is basically going to not overweight that very inactive period of time. Plus, when I get a breakout move, instead of getting one gigantic, let's say, you know, I'm making a gross example here, but let's say, you know, market all of a sudden spikes by $3. Well, on a five minute chart, I might have a $3 bar, one big $3 bar, right? But on a $1 case bar, it would break it up into three bars or an X range bar or DR range bar or regular range bar. So basically the distribution of volatility helps our indicators to react to price movement rather than price and time movement, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by three times ATR on a two minute chart. I mean, that's gonna be different for every market. Um, presentation uh, what is the equivalent of these case bars to say a two-minute chart well it depends on what you're looking at I mean if you're looking at a two-minute chart on WTI you know that might be a 10 cent bar 
Um, but if you're looking at a two minute chart on the e mini S&P 500, um, that might be a, you know, two point chart. I, I mean, it, 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 it's completely dependent. That's what the X range bars, that's where the advantage of the X range bars comes in is you can put a two, you can plug in that you want a two minute X range bar. And what it will do is it will calculate what is the average high low range of a two minute chart over the last 10 days and use that as the target range for that day on any chart that you put it on. You know, whether you're looking at E-mini, whether you're looking at Forex, whether you're looking at, you know, WTI, Brent, natural gas, whatever, gold, whatever it might be, it's going to automatically calculate that for you. That's where the X range bars are really, really handy. Um, no, you're welcome, Ari. Thank you. Um, I try to be honest and straightforward with everybody. Uh, you know, I'm not a snake oil salesman, and uh, so I want to make sure that, you know, you get what you want. Um, all right. I know. Let's see. We're wrapping up here. Great presentation. Our indicators do work on regular range bars. Our indicator work on just about any Ranko bars, Kagi, all of those. Uh, it's not a system, John Rogers. Um, so it, it will work on spot gold. It'll work on equities. It'll work on anything that's liquid. But it's not a it's not a black box system. You know, it's not going to tell you buy here, sell there, and you know, trade a five minute chart. Uh, that's not that's not what it is. It'll give you indications of when to get in, indications of when to get out on any chart. Um, and to sign up for the 30-day trial, again, you can go to the casego.com website or this link here, the NT Webinar 2019. Um, either way, you can, you can do that. And when you sign up for the trial, you will receive an email. It will give you the links for everything to download, uh, the NinjaScript download. So you'll get the download. You'll download the NinjaScript, install it, and it will, as long as you haven't had a trial in the past, you will automatically be set up to take the 30-day trial from that point forward. Okay. If you've had a trial in the past, you're going to have to contact us because we're going to have to override that. Uh, yeah. So John, you're saying, uh, uh, John, you're saying that the uh, or Gene, um, that the indicators slow down. I mean, if you get if you're using a small enough bar length with a larger look back length, there's a lot going on with the case stat or indicators. Lots and lots of math going on in the background, so it does slow the indicators down. What I or slow your charts down. What I would recommend doing is looking at less data, so that it's not having to do calculations over so many bars. <laughs> Chris, anytime, buddy. You just call me up. Happy to give you a free trial anytime. <laughs> um. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here. I think Tiffany's gonna jump back on. You guys are always welcome to send me any questions that you have. My email's up on the screen, so feel free to shoot me any uh, questions. Again, thank you all very much, um, and uh, hopefully uh, I will be talking to a lot of you very soon. Perfect. I'd like to give a special thank you to Dean Rogers of Case & Company for a great presentation. Everyone in attendance here today will receive an on-demand recording of today's event. Please keep an eye out for that email. The Shader Ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly vendor events as a value-add service for our clients, if you find value in these events, we hope you'll attend them on a regular basis. We would like to remind you the information that was provided in this was of Case and Company and not of Ninja Trader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Again, we appreciate the time you spend with us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us at Ninja Trader Ecosystem. And again, thank you so much, Dean. Thank you, Tiffany, and thank you, Ninja Trader. Appreciate it, and everybody that attended today.